Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Feel It to Heal It podcast. I'm about to hop on Instagram Live for a little surprise impromptu live chatting all about my brand new program. I'm so excited to bring this to you guys today. Oh, this has been a long time in the making. So let's go. Hello everyone, surprise, I'm doing a little impromptu live today to talk all about my new program that I launched yesterday on the 88 Lines Portal Magical Abundant Manifestation Day, Authenticity Unleashed. So you guys have may, you may or may not had seen that this was going to be a program that was coming. I think I did like a little sneak peek of it two times when I had my business sale going. And then also, if you've looked at the landing page for Beyond Your Wildest Dreams membership, but I was really waiting for the right time to launch this program because it's too important to rush. And the whole point of this program is to guide you home to your most authentic self. And there were still a lot of parts of that that I was having to go through personally on my own healing journey to be able to teach it in a way that was from a place of integrity, from a place of full authenticity. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to just trust that when I have landed more on the other side of the work that I'm doing to meet my own authentic self in a deeper way than ever before, I will trust that I will know when the right time is to launch it. And so I've been kind of landing more and more on the other side of getting to know my most authentic self. Um, it's still a process. It's still a journey, but I felt like I'd landed enough on the other side and it was feeling so alive for me because I was still very much in the thick of it that I was like, okay, this is ready. Like it is brewing. It is bubbling to the surface. It is here. It is ready to come through me and into your ears and body and mind and soul so that you can absorb this knowledge and wisdom and information to help you experience the same landing in your most powerful, authentic self. So that was kind of the, I'm just going to move you guys over here. Um, that was kind of the inspiration. Hmm. So hard finding a good spot where the computer can see me, but also you guys can see me. All right, we're gonna try this way. Does that work? <laughs> I really gotta get a better setup, guys. We're really doing a bootleg version over here. All right, I think that's good enough. So the inspiration behind Authenticity Unleash was when you embark on a healing journey, and when I had started my healing journey, I had this perception of who I was as a person. And some of the perceptions were accurate. Some of the perceptions were, some of the perceptions were not accurate. And some of the perceptions were accurate, but I didn't have the internal safety I needed to actually embody my authenticity. And so I had this cognitive awareness of like, who I am as a person, but I didn't have the internal safety to actually embody that. And so that's really what has come out of this whole process for me of understanding, like, you can know that you're a certain way at your core, but if your trauma gets in the way each and every time of actually being able to relate from that authentic place, then knowing who you are only goes so far. It's truly about feeling safe to embody and relate and be and show up who you are in the world. So for example, people growing up would always view me as the zest for life, emotionally intelligent, confident. Um, what else? just like people in college would describe me as emotionally sound because I had all this emotional wisdom to share, which was true. But what they didn't see was that on the inside in my most intimate relationships, so my romantic relationships, um, family relationships, just other close relationships, 
this whole other internal world of chaos and dysregulation and fear would come out. And so I wasn't acting in alignment with my authentic self. My authentic self is actually very grounded and wise and calm and joyful and does have a zest for life, but also doesn't feel the need to chase highs and lows anymore. And so it's interesting because in human design, I am an emotional authority. So I'm meant to experience highs and lows, but with my old norm of dysregulation, it would be not just experiencing and riding highs and lows. Hey, Isabel, it's more of like, I would let those highs and lows wipe me out and crash me out. Right. So it's like authentically, yes, I'm authentically designed to experience those, but I'm not authentically meant to allow those waves to just knock me out because that's dysregulation. Dysregulation just means you don't feel safe to be with feelings. Like you have fear come up and the fear takes over. It takes over your thoughts. It takes over your body. It takes over your behaviors. It's different than just allowing the fear to be there and allowing yourself to feel it and allowing it to move through. So I had all this emotional wisdom, but I was too dysregulated internally to be able to actually embody that wisdom. I would see myself from the outside of like, oh yeah, I could teach this work in my sleep. But then internally there was such a lack of self-belief, a lack of self-trust. So I really had to do the deep excavation, the deep soul work to really look at why am I not trusting myself? Why am I not believing in myself? Where am I still attaching on to dysregulation or, you know, any other symptoms? Because that's what it is. It's a symptom. Hey, Hannah, that's what it is. It's just a symptom. And what happens is we attach on to those symptoms and define those symptoms as our authentic self. I am the anxious person. I am the dysregulated person. I am the chronically sick person. I am the overthinker. I am the person who struggles with OCD. There's not enough separation of authentic core self and symptoms. So I used to identify with all of, you know, my sickness, both physically, emotionally, mentally, rather than understanding that all of that was just this outer shell. Like my favorite analogy to use is the onion. When you're cooking, you take off that first layer, which is just the peel, right? It's like the skin. You don't actually eat the, you peel it just like with any other vegetable that you peel, you peel it. That's not actually the onion that you're consuming. <laughs> and so with our authentic self, we are not the peel. We are the core. And so what happens is the outer layer, that peel, which then represents in this analogy, our trauma, our symptoms, our protectors, we overly attach and identify with that peel. And then what literally what healing is in a nutshell is understanding that you have the choice to peel the onion. You don't actually have to keep that layer of it on. And what that means is you're releasing everything that's not you. Because when we experience something as humans, it can feel so innately tied to who we are. My anxiety defines me, my fear of abandonment, my BPD symptoms, all those things define me, but they don't. And that's where you can take your power back is you can understand that you have the power to change anything that is not actually authentically you. And it can feel really scary because these are the ways in which we've known ourselves, right? We've gotten emotional needs based on these things. We've gotten emotional needs based on being the one who's sick, being the one who's anxious all the time. That's how we get attention. That's how our inner child knows to get attention. We need attention as humans. That's not a bad thing, but it's how do we want to get attention? Do we actually need attention for those things? I had this come up yesterday where I was having a Voxer day with my mentor and I noticed this, this fear come up and I noticed this grasping urge for attention for the fear. Even though we had already talked about the fear, we'd already processed the fear, we'd already moved through the fear, there was still this attachment to the way I used to relate to fear, which is, 
oh my God, I'm terrified. And so I need everyone to know I'm terrified so that they can give me validation and attention and co-regulation and so that I can feel safe. But that's still perpetuating this old way of relating by keeping myself dependent on something outside of myself to feel safe rather than bringing myself back to the present, which is in this present moment, I am a full grown ass adult. And this can bring up so much shame because we cognitively know that we're like, so then we shame ourselves. Well, why are we acting this way? Why are we acting like a two-year-old? Why are we letting our inner baby come out? When we know better, right? We know that we are a grown ass adult. We know that we shouldn't be grasping for that external saving, for that safety, for that validation, whatever it is. And so it's about being with that shame because that shame communicates to you where you are acting in alignment and where you're not while also understanding that part of doing this healing work is meeting the unmet childhood needs of your inner child. And so it's okay to just be honest with yourself and say, do I actually need this? And sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes I really do need this co-regulation right now. I really do need this validation right now. But being able to communicate that from a place of, I take responsibility for those needs. That's not yours That's not the other person's job, your partner, your coach, your therapist. It's not their job to give you those needs. It's your job to communicate from your adult self. Hey, I'm feeling really scared and I could really use some validation on this, or I could use some co-regulation or just reassurance or whatever the thing is, just some holding. And then you have to notice if you're then using that as a crutch, right? Because that gets really sneaky of like, oh yeah, I just need this. But it's like, do you actually, or are you just attaching onto old ways of being? That's not your actual authentic self. It can feel so terrifying to let all of those ways of being and relating go because that's all the nervous system is known. And the nervous system does not like change or anything foreign or anything unknown, And so we have to be held in a safe container to allow ourselves to shed all that's not us and really get to know who the fuck are we? Sometimes we don't even know because we've been operating from trauma for so long and that can feel so scary. And it's okay that that feels scary. It's okay that there's fear there and we get to decide how we're going to relate to that. Are we going to relate to that fear from a place of, oh my God, I'm not safe or oh, it makes sense that there's fear because this is a new experience, right? And the nervous system is not a fan of new experiences. And I can come back to the present moment that I'm safe to relate in this new way. I'm safe to get to know who that person is. Who is my authentic self? Do I actually like this? Or am I just placating to the attachment figures around me? Am I actually shy or am I just scared to use my voice? Am I actually anxious or do I just have deep fear that I need to learn how to feel? Am I actually a people pleaser or is that just my inner child fearing abandonment? And once you tend to that, she can relate in a new way, right? So many of these things of this is authentically me, it's not actually authentic. Everyone who knows me knows that I was obsessed with becoming a mom. Now I don't even know if I want children because that was my codependency because I didn't feel safe to be my own mom. I felt safer to take care of everyone else around me. Is it actually authentic for you to drink every night at a bar? Or is it authentic for you to learn how to feel your feelings that that alcohol is numbing? Is it actually a balance between eating healthy food and putting garbage in your mouth? Or are you using food to numb, avoid, cope, soothe, Because I can always feel the difference energetically if I'm eating something as like a balanced treat, right? Of like, oh yeah, this is an alignment to consume versus, oh yeah, I'm totally using this to numb my feelings. So we categorize all these things as our authentic self only to learn that most of it is just our trauma. And underneath all of that lives your authentic self. So every time I would be dysregulated, I would then have to come back to oh wait, my authentic self is really fucking grounded. And so anytime I'm not grounded, that is fear taking over. That is trauma taking over. That is attachment wounding taking over. That is my inner child taking over. What do I want to do? How do I want to relate to be able to shift how I'm relating to myself in the world in the situation at hand? So that is the inspiration behind this program. 
And this is the highest level of support program for the lowest cost that I've ever offered. So typically when you join one of my group programs, like Come Home to Yourself, like Real Men Heal, those are my two signature group programs. You get the weekly sessions of processing the pain, the rewiring your nervous system, helping you build that internal safety, helping you learn how to feel your feelings. And you also get the in-between support and the course with the modules. All of that with both of my main programs is minimum 1,000, but actually for both of them, it's more. For Come Home to Yourself, it's 1111 a month. For Real Men Heal, it's 1200 a month. So minimum would be a thousand per month. You're getting that same level of support in a month for half the price, five, five, five for pre-sale, and then it's going up to seven, seven, seven. I wanted to make this as accessible as possible because this has been some of the most profound work that I've done on my healing journey. And I don't see anything else like it out there. Like this is what's missing. We have programs for healing anxiety. We have programs for manifestation. We have programs for business and money, but we don't have programs to actually have you be able to clear the lenses and look with a clear lens of what is actually you, because most people in the world are operating from a non-authentic self, from a conditioned self that allows them to feel safe. Most people in the world do not even know who their authentic self is. And that is so heartbreaking and scary to think about, but this is how we shift it. So for literally 555, which you can break that down into a payment plan. So 277, you can pay 277 right now, and you're going to get six live processing calls with me in between support and an entire course. I mean, just need I say more? Insane, insane value. And I'm so grateful and excited and honored to be offering it to you because who you will discover and uncover at the end of these six weeks together, like so much can shift in such a short amount of time. You will just be mind blown. That is a common thing that my clients tell me over and over mind blown. Oh, I thought that's just who I was. Oh, that was my trauma. Mind blown. It's, we need another person to point these things out so that you can learn how to notice them in yourself. So if this is calling to you, please reach out with any questions and you can uh, DM me for the link to learn more about Authenticity Unleashed. We start the end of September and it's going to be going all the way through October and it's going to be a small intimate group. So there are limited spots available. This is not going to be like a one to many where it's like a whole group of people. It's going to be a small intimate group. And I'm so excited to guide you home to your most authentic self, or even if you know who that is, like helping you feel safe to be seen in your authenticity in front of all your attachment figures, where you're doing something different than they are, or you're making choices based on their opinion, you're going to leave this program being able to make choices that feel so good and authentic to you, regardless of what anyone else thinks. You're no longer going to have to ask a million people their opinions because you're going to learn how to trust your own gut intuition and discern what is gut, what is intuition versus what is fear. You're going to leave this program feeling more deeply connected to yourself and those around you and your purpose and what you're here to do in this lifetime. So I'm so excited for this. Reach out with any questions. I love you all so much. And I will talk to you soon. Take care.